Ladies and gents, welcome back. If you haven't noticed, things are getting a little bit more expensive, and by a little bit, I mean a lot. And that would be everyday items such as food and fuel. This in the industry we call inflation. Now, the Trudeau government has come out with a great plan to get us... Oh, oh, what? Oh, they, they haven't? Oh, <laughs> we don't have a good plan. In fact, Trudeau government spending is worsening inflation crisis, says Scotia Bank. So Justin Trudeau's government is, uh, well, let's look into this. Scotia Bank investors report decries that Trudeau government lack of action in reducing government spending, forcing the Bank of Canada to hike interest rates. <laughs> Most most of us uh, who understand a little bit about e the econ world would know that, well, interest rates are bound to go up either way. But uh, yeah, if you want to blame Trudeau's spending for interest rates, Trudeau's spending needs to stop straight up. According to Bloomberg News, Scotiabank economists have published a report arguing that the burden of lowering inflation is falling on the private sector as the federal government <laughs> continues to spend at high levels. Oh, so we all need to just like curb curb what we're doing uh, because the federal government needs to spend all the monies or, they, or because they're drunken sailors and they won't stop. In recent months, the Bank of Canada has hiked interest rates in an effort to minimize the growing inflation crisis in Canada. Uh, some will, members of the government will try to tell you that it's not, it's not, uh, the amount of money that's out there that is uh, the reason for inflation. <laughs> but in fact, it's exactly that. The output loot, uh, the output losses that the Bank of Canada must engineer to rein in the infl inflation are falling disproportionately on the private sector, says the report. At the beginning of June, the Bank of Canada increased the benchmark interest rate to 1.5%. It is expected to increase the rate to buy 0.75 the next time the central bank meets, which honestly, I think is still too low to recover from uh, the scenario that we're in right now. The report argues that the government reduces government spending. It will allow the central bank to, uh, to keep interest rates lower. The less government consumption would lead to a lower path for the policy rate and some of the burden of adjustment away from the private sector, the report reads. In recent weeks, the Trudeau government has not expressed the desire to... <laughs> of course, they have not. They have not expressed the desire to limit government spending despite touting fiscal restraint. The Minister of Finance, Christia Freeland, announced that a $7 billion spending plan in order to combat inflation. You cannot make this up, folks. You cannot make this up. We're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna reduce inflation. We just need seven billion dollars to figure out how. <laughs> well, let me tell you, don't spend seven billion dollars. And this is just absolutely ridiculous. The Trudeau government spent more money than the government in Can Canadian history, creating a three hundred and twenty-seven point seven billion deficit in the fiscal year of 2020-2021 and projected $144.5 billion deficit for the fiscal year of 2021-2022. Unbelievable. Unbelievable here. We have a, uh, a readout here of what... Well, here, let's just look at this. This is Trudeau government debt compared to every Canadian prime minister since 1867. He spent more money and created more debt than all of them combined. You cannot make this up. And what is this? What is this turning out to look like? Well, here are some of the gas prices around Canada. We're looking at Alberta with a dollar eighty nine a gallon. British Columbia with two dollars and sixteen cents. I know right here where I live, it's two hundred uh, two dollars and thirty cents. It's 229. It might as well be 229.9, right? So Manitoba, $2.07. New Brunswick, $2.15. Newfoundland and Labrador, $2.26. So I'm looking at these numbers and judging based on my neighborhood that the numbers are actually higher in all these places. 
unbelievable. What does this look like uh, for the housing market? Well, housing market correction on the horizon in Canada, this report asks. Because at this point, if we have to keep raising interest rates, and this is this is not a, this isn't rocket surgery. This isn't you know brain brain science here. It's it's very simple. If you don't have the money to pay your bills, you're gonna lose the things that you got. You're gonna lose the things that you got. So if uh, interest rates go up above and beyond what you can afford for your mortgage, um, and a lot of people, if the interest rates go up in a considerable way will find themselves on the losing side of uh, the market on this one and having to sell their home. You can't you can't be uh, paying a mortgage where you're you're paying less than the interest rates uh, per month and not paying off any principal. That's what we call being underwater. And that's what it's looking like a uh, future based on this Trudeau government. The inflation crisis has resulted in higher prices for various essentials like gasoline, cars, groceries, uh, lumber, and more. If anyone's built anything in their in re any recent time, go go try to buy a stick of wood. Go buy a, buy a couple of two by fours. I guarantee you, you'll be surprised at what the price is in the market for all those contractors out there. You've been feeling that for some time. A May Angus Reid survey found that half of the half of Canadians are struggling to feed their families. And Main Street Research Survey found that 25% of Canadians are eating less amid Canada's inflationary spiral. And that's just going to get worse. It's going to get worse. And honestly, a lot of people are stocking up on food right now because they know if if their money is going to be worth less down the road, the best investment right now is to just buy food that, uh, well, you're going to have to buy anyhow. So go out and buy it now because in a few months, it's going to be more money and you might as well spend that money now and get a bit more bang for your buck. Worries that the economy will fall into a recession stem from concerns that the interest rate hikes from the Bank of Canada will have undue harm on businesses leading to mass unemployment. And yeah, that's uh, other than the housing market. Yeah, that that's another thing that'll get hit is businesses uh, won't be able to pay all the interest <laughs> as as uh, rates adjust. And so a lot of people have loans as well. And uh, it's, it's a popular thing these days to have uh, variable rate mortgages, things like that. If these, if these interest rates adjust, that's going to adjust your variable rate mortgage very soon. <laughs> it's not like, uh, so uh, some people they'll have fixed rate mortgages. So you can, you can skirt having to pay the, the difference for a little while. And that's that's the way that works. But no, apparently uh, up to 50 percent of new mortgages on the marketplace are variable rate. According to a Maru Maru public opinion poll, most Canadians believe that if we aren't already in a recession, we are close to it. And I would agree with that. Thanks to North for the report here. Great reporting as usual and always link in the description down below but we're in we're in a situation where things could get worse really quick and i don't think we've seen the uh the worst of it and at, at the same time the government is just spending like crazy and they're not spending money that's already there if they were taxing us at the rate that they were spending we would already have no money left over you wouldn't have any money to even buy the fuel or buy the food that you need on a daily basis, pay your mortgage, pay your rents, whatever your expenses happen to be. No, they're deferring the payments down the road by what? Issuing bonds and, and printing new currency, throwing it out there and just buying up stuff. One might, might ponder that this is intentional and Trudeau is intentionally trying to destroy the economy. I don't know if he has any sort of ulterior motives, maybe has uh, affiliations with some sort of outside group. I don't know. I'm just speculating. Perhaps perhaps uh, someone who is working so diligently to destroy the economy, um, it would be... <laughs> I'm just throwing it out there. But how else could you destroy the economy 
without intentionally trying to destroy the economy. Um, anyway, I'll leave that for the, the question of the day. Ladies and gents, down in the description down below, tell me, is this on purpose? <laughs> Are they doing this on purpose? Because uh, it sure as heck looks like it. It sure as heck looks like it. If you were not trying to destroy the economy, well, this is not the way to do it. And, um, well, that's where we are. That's all I got for you for this video this morning. Uh, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Hit that like button and leave a comment in the comment section down below. We'll see you in the next video. Keep on trucking.